you turn to someone and say, God is. What you need, God is. What you need, God is. Amen. This morning, I'm going to jump right in to the Word of God and, and speaking about the a concept that we see in the Scripture. And I'm going to be reading all throughout my message, so I'm not going to ask you to stand for the reading of the Word of God. But this morning, I, I want to remind you of and, and to speak to one of the most powerful metaphors that we see repeated throughout Scripture time and time again. I want to speak about a reality that exists within each of us as humans. A battle that is fought daily, a war that is waged, if you will. What I'm talking about this morning is the war between darkness and light. Darkness and light. One of the most common themes of morality, common themes in history, one of the the best ways that we use to talk about good and evil, about God and sin and light and darkness, we all understand it, we all grasp it. And I want to pose a question to you at the outset of this message, a question that, if you're honest with yourself, tells you everything that you need to know about your relationship with God. The question is this, are you walking in light or are you walking in darkness? Are you walking in light? Or are you walking in darkness this morning? You know, to some, this question is reassuring because you're confident in the answer. You know without a doubt that, yes, you're walking in the light and you understand the references that it brings up. You understand what I'm talking about. The conversation makes sense. To some of you, this question, if, if you're honest with yourself, may be convicting because you know that there are things in your life that shouldn't be there. There are things in your life that you've allowed into your life that are bringing darkness. There are things in your life that have happened that have brought darkness and you've allowed darkness to creep into your life and to creep into your walk and so you know that you're not where you should be, not where you need to be. And to some, maybe you're, you're not really sure. Maybe this is a new setting. Maybe uh, the concept of a church service and the way that we do it is kind of foreign to you and you're not really sure and you may say, well, yeah, you know, I, I'm a good person and so I, I, I want to walk in the light. I get that. And to you, I say that that's fine. If this is a new setting for you, then that's fine, and we're going to talk about this this morning. And to help answer the question, to help you be secure in your own walk with God, I want to dive into this well-known metaphor a little bit more. As I said, the distinction between darkness and light is such a common occurrence in Scripture. And in fact, it's the very first thing that we're introduced to in the Bible. Genesis 1 and 1, and whether or not you have gone to church your whole life or not, chances are you can quote this Scripture. If you ever tried to read your Bible through many times, maybe you, you've gotten through this Scripture like a million times. And then you drop off like halfway through Genesis. So we're familiar with this one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. The very outset of Scripture, we see God putting light and darkness in opposition. And so we see at the very beginning of time that darkness, in essence, is the absence of the voice of God. Darkness represents the absence of the voice of God, the absence of the presence of God. And so this morning, I want to speak a little more about darkness. Darkness by design... By nature is debilitating, it's confusing, it's difficult, it seems overpowering, it seems inescapable. There's one thing I know about every single person in this room, it's that there has been a time in your life when you feel like you have been in darkness. Maybe this morning you feel that you're in darkness. Maybe you feel like you're struggling with darkness, surrounded by darkness. But this morning the very first thing I want to proclaim to you is that in the darkness of your life. There is a light that can shine. There is a light that can pierce the darkness of your situation. There is a light that can pierce the darkness of what you're going through. Maybe you feel like you're surrounded, but in Jesus Christ, there is life, and life in Him is the light of all men. And we don't have to live in darkness. We were not made to live in darkness. So this morning I recognize there are people even right now if you were to categorize the situations of your life, if you were to try to explain what was happening in your life, you may just say, I'm just in darkness. 
I'm struggling, I'm battling, I'm frustrated, I'm angry. I don't know the answer. It's dark. It's just darkness. Now the power of this message is also the weakness of this message. Because the reality is this is one of the most common themes in Scripture. So the danger is that we hear it and it, we just glaze over because, oh, I know, light and darkness, this makes sense, I, I get this, I know everything you're going to say, and the problem is that we, we feel like we know the answer before it's even given. But the truth is, it applies to everyone, and darkness is many things, and if we begin to understand some of those things and the ways that it operates and we can identify them as darkness, I believe that we can overcome them. So I want to talk about darkness a little bit this morning, a couple of specific things that I believe darkness is, and that way we can combat and overcome it. The first thing that you need to understand about darkness is this. Darkness is isolating. Darkness is isolating. When you're in darkness, you perceive that you are utterly alone. When you're, in a, when you're in a dark room, when you're in somewhere that is devoid of light, there's no reference for you to understand what your surroundings contain. There's no way for you to know what is happening around you. That's why when the lights go out, maybe just a moment ago when the lights went out, we reach for the person next to us. Because although in this room we know that we're not alone, there's something inside of us that so desperately wants to confirm that I am not alone. So when the lights go out, we reach, we connect, we try to make sure that we can understand what's happening around us. As you may be in this morning, the difficulty of darkness, the difficulty of isolation, is that you can be in a room full of people. Even right now, there's someone here in a room full of wonderful people in a room full of God's people, in a room full of worship, in a room full of the presence of God, and you feel utterly alone. You feel totally isolated from the presence of God. You feel totally isolated from the people of God. And I know that that is a reality, but it's not one that we are meant to live with. In 1 Corinthians 12, 13, we see that for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether bond or free, have all been made to drink into one spirit. So this morning, I want to tell you that if you feel isolated, you may just be walking in darkness. If you feel isolated, then the truth of your life may be that you are in darkness because God made us to live in community. I want to tell you this morning that you are not supposed to feel that way. And the truth is, if we just turn the light on to our situation, we will realize that we are not alone. That's why coming to church is important because we're not made to live this life alone. We're made to connect with the people of God and to say, I refuse to be isolated. So I'm going to step out of my isolation. So this morning I want to diagnose your isolation as darkness. You are not alone. You are not alone this morning. It's just darkness. It's not truth. It's deception. It's not truth. It's just isolation. But it's not a real isolation. It's just darkness. It is darkness. So if you feel isolated, if you feel alone, if you feel like you are alone in this world, this pursuit, I want to tell you that you are not made to stay that way, but it's just a temporary darkness that can be lifted by the light of Jesus Christ. Darkness is isolating. It doesn't matter if you've been in church your whole life, you can feel isolated. It doesn't matter if you're brand new this morning, you can feel isolated. We understand social media, the advent of social media and technology promised us that we would all be connected. But the truth is we are never more alone now. We are isolated in our own rooms and we're looking at life through a different lens and our students are facing isolation and anxiety and depression more than ever before. And I submit to you that it's darkness. It is not of God. The second thing you need to understand is that darkness is deceptive. Darkness is so deceptive. Deception is one of the strongest weapons of the enemy of your soul. And darkness is so deceptive. When you're in the dark, your mind plays tricks on you. When you're in the dark, one of the first things to accompany you is fear. And it can be funny sometimes, things that we find ourselves jumping at in the dark that are, pose no threat, things that seem to be scary in the moment. And if I asked everyone if you were scared of the dark, I think a lot of people would say, no, I'm not not scared of the dark. But I promise if I put you in the right situation 
in, in utter darkness with the right maybe noises happening in the background, you would probably find yourself filled with a little bit of fear. And, and I want to, it's so funny to see uh, animals and, and, and children react to darkness and shadows. And I want you to check, check this little guy out and see how he responds. <laughs> Has no idea what that is. <laughs> now we we see that video and we find it humorous because we know that there's no danger to this dog, and the dog obviously doesn't have the ability to d differentiate between a shadow and something real. And maybe we can laugh and say, "Oh, that's so silly," but. I don't know about you, but I, have you ever been scared by a shadow? Maybe you're in a parking lot and you see a, or a, a parking garage and you see a shadow go by, you think about to get hit by a car. Anybody ever turned a corner and was scared by a shadow? Yeah, you come around the corner and jump. Like, oh, I'm just doing my exercises. That's, that's, that's what I normally do, right? Surprised by someone as you turn a corner. But here's the reality about shadows. And I think it has some profound truths for our spiritual life. We're scared of shadows because of what we think they represent. We're scared of shadows, not because of what they are, not because of what is casting the shadow, but because of what we think that it represents. And that's exactly what the enemy can do, because here's the truth. The enemy of your soul knows that he doesn't have any power over you, so what he has to do is try to deceive you that things are not as they seem. He's trying to deceive you that something is bigger than it really is. So let me just pause and tell you right now, that thing that you've been so scared of, that thing that you've been struggling with, that battling with, it's not as it seems. It's just a shadow. There's nothing behind that shadow. There's nothing to fear, because God has not given you a spirit of fear so don't be afraid of a shadow step out and say I'm gonna live in the light we're scared of shadows because of what the enemy tries to convince us they represent in our life darkness is deceiving it's so deceiving and you know when the lights go out unexpectedly say if you're at home or maybe you're in, in a store somewhere and the lights go out and uh, you know, it's utterly dark. I think, I, I would say there's two kinds of people in that situation. There, there are two types of people. The first type of people, uh, person in that situation, lights go out. We're all going to die. <laughs> right? Hunker in place. Right? Hide. Right? Freeze. That's it. This is the end. I knew it. That's, that, that's the first type of person. Right? And then the second type of person, lights go out and they're like, oh, I knew it. I've got this. I'm ready for this. Right? I'm not scared. Don't worry. I can handle it. How many of you, to be honest, say you're the first type of person? Any of the hunker in place people? Lights go out. I'm not moving. We don't like to admit that. It's the truth. And that, I think that really happens. I think you respond in one of those two ways. And, and the truth is that the first person responds in fear. Fear is their constant companion. Fear of their surroundings. Fear of what's going to happen. Fear of what darkness means. Fear of what darkness brings. And to these people, darkness brings out their own insecurity. In your life, when you're faced with darkness in your life, it brings out insecurities. I can't do it. What's going to happen to me? How am I going to make it? I'm not prepared for this. I don't know what to do. I'm lost. This is it. This is the end. But the second person responds in faith. Right? The lights go out. No worries. I can handle this. It's not that big of a deal. I've been equipped for this. I've prepared for this. I've trained for this. I'm ready for this. The darkness doesn't scare me. I would say that our spiritual life is the same way. When we're faced with difficult situations, when we're faced with darkness, we either respond in fear or in faith. We either respond in fear or in faith. And I want to I tell you this, and listen, listen to this. I believe that your ability to respond in faith depends on your ability to diagnose darkness as deception and not your destiny. I think your ability to respond in faith instead of fear depends on your ability to see darkness and understand that this is deception. 
This is not the end of my story. So somebody today, you have written yourself off. You have maybe given up on your life, but let me just tell you that your story does not end here. This darkness is not your destiny. This darkness is not your destination, but God has something more for you, and this is just a deception from the enemy. Darkness is so deceptive. The other thing about the deception of darkness is we default to the worst case scenario. In darkness, our minds deceive us and twist everything into a worst case possibility. Husbands, if you want to test this and see if I'm right, tonight after your wife goes to sleep and everything is dark, I want you to sneak out of the house as quietly as you can and then make your way back in as noisily as you can. See what happens. You may find yourself on the receiving end of your wife's favorite frying pan or 38 special, whatever the case may be. You know, just a couple weeks ago, I guess it's been maybe a month or so ago, the power went out at our home when I was here at church and I rushed home and I found my seven month pregnant and beautiful wife sitting on the couch in the dark with a flashlight and a knife from the kitchen. <laughs> and I just, I just kind of stopped and I, I paused and I just said, babe, just Walk me through, like, what's the plan here? Just, just I want to just see what, what was going to happen, right? She said, well, you know, maybe, Robert, okay, hold still, just right there. You know, I don't know. But she felt like that was it. But as funny as that is, I think we all have those situations in life, the, the truth is that when we find ourselves in the dark, we immediately begin to perceive everything as a threat. The deception is that everything is a threat to us. When we're in the dark, we can't perceive things correctly, and so we begin to automatically assume that everything is out to get us. And so that's why you can come to church in a place that is supposed to bring healing and life, and you get angry, and you get offended, and you get bitter. And Pastor Macy's not here, so let me just say this. If you feel like Pastor Macy has offended you, if you feel like Pastor Macy has preached at you, if you feel like Pastor Macy has done something to you, I want to prayerfully submit to you that he is not out to get you, but that is a deception from the enemy, and you are being tricked and fooled into being offended. And you need to step out of that and diagnose it for what it is. Your pastor is out to save your soul. He's out to help you. He's out to make your life better. He's out to do everything he can to pull you out of your situation and push you on the right path. It's deception. When you're deceived by darkness, you see everything as an offense. If you're easily offended by everyone, co-workers, family, your spouse, your friends, it may be darkness and it may be you. It may not be them, it may be you. When Joshua, a young leader of the nation of Israel, is faced with the task of leading after the death of Moses, the incredible leader that brought them out of Egypt, the land of bondage, God encourages him and he says this, he says in Joshua 1, he says, this is my command, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And I love that because this is what we need to understand. In darkness, we can't perceive God's presence. When you're in darkness, you can't feel God's presence. And some of you in this place, you may feel like, I just, God, I just can't feel your presence. So there must be something wrong. I, I, don't, I can't connect in worship. I can't connect in the message. I just don't feel your presence. But the truth is, in the dark, let me tell you this right now. When you're in the dark, when you can't sense God's presence, you've got to rest in God's promise. There will be times when you cannot sense God's presence, but that's when you need to get out this book and say, God, I may not be able to feel any thing right now but your word says that I have life everlasting your word says I will never be left alone you will never leave me nor forsake me I'm speaking to somebody right now you can't feel God's presence you gotta trust his promise when you can't track God you gotta trust him trust him trust the word of God because you're in darkness and it's deceptive don't walk out on God. Don't walk out on this church just because you can't feel his presence. You've got to rest in his promise. Rest in his promise. Psalms 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light into my path. You see, a lamp doesn't cast light miles down the road. No, it casts light right in front of your feet. But we get frustrated at God because we say, God, I want you to illuminate the whole path. I want you to tell me what I'm going to do. And until I can see everything clearly, I'm not taking a single step. But God said, I didn't call you to see everything. I'm a lamp unto your feet. Let me worry about your future. All you've got to do is take your next step. So this morning, you've been paralyzed because you're frustrated at God. Stop it. Trust God and say, you know what, God? I can't figure it out. I don't see what you're doing, but I'm going to take my next step and I'm going to trust you. He's a lamp unto your feet. You'll never figure it all out. You'll never have all the answers. But that doesn't mean you can't take your next step in your relationship with him. The word of God can illuminate the deception of darkness and allow you to step forward in your life. And finally, I want to tell you this morning that darkness is dangerous. Darkness is dangerous. Understand it. Believe it. And let me tell you, it's interesting. Darkness, if you think about it, darkness can't really hurt you. Darkness doesn't have any power over you. Darkness doesn't have the ability to do something. What darkness does is it creates an environment where normal things become dangerous. Darkness creates the atmosphere for things to become dangerous. Case in point, Legos. My parents, parents got that immediately. Right? When, when the lights go out, my daughter's playroom becomes a minefield for my feet. I'm trying to walk around those Legos, stepping on those things. And that's, that's the way it is in our lives. Sometimes darkness can create an atmosphere where everything can be dangerous. And that is why you can come to a familiar place like this very church and it feels so unfamiliar and so foreign and you feel like you don't fit in. And you see, that, that's what I want you to understand this morning is it's not God. God hasn't walked out on you. You're in darkness and you're in danger because darkness wants to convince you that everything is unfamiliar. When you're walking in darkness, relationships that are built to help you only seem to hurt you. And in the dark, the atmosphere is created for evil to fester. In darkness, there is secret. There is secrecy. And the secrecy of our phones has created a dangerous darkness that has never before been accessible in human history. Sin flourishes in secrecy. And the promise of being anonymous is the biggest lie the devil wants to sell us through technology because every click of our fingertips reveals the darkest parts of our hearts and every sin, every double tap, every click will be accounted for because one day everything that is done in darkness will be brought to light. And we need to understand that it's dangerous. Your phone has created the ability to be totally isolated totally alone and cover everything and you can fool me and it doesn't hurt me you can fool everybody but the only one that it hurts is you darkness is dangerous and I believe that for us that have lived our lives for Jesus that claim to follow him wholeheartedly one of the most sobering scriptures to me is found in Matthew chapter 6 Matthew 6 and 22 it says your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your whole body when your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light, listen to this, if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. That's what we face, the danger of the church goer. The danger of the Christ follower is to convince ourselves that the darkness that we are walking in is actually light. Let me tell you something, if you haven't already figured this out, you can come to church, you can put on a suit, you can smile and shake hands, you can put your hands together, and you can go out and walk in darkness, and the only thing you're doing is deceiving yourself. How deep that darkness is. How dangerous that darkness is. We've got to wake up and expose our life to the light of God and say, God, search me. God, know me. God, let me understand, God, that I can't live in darkness. I've got to expose my soul to your light and to your word. I'm not made to live in darkness. 
And let me just break it down. Let me just be very, very practical because this is so important in the life of a Christian. Let me give you four signs that you are living in darkness. Let me give you four signs, four dangers that you are walking in darkness and you don't realize it. Number one, you are walking in darkness if there is a growing gap between your public and your private life. You are walking in darkness if there is a growing gap between your public and your private life. And you know what? Many times the intersection of your public and your private life is on your social media account. Because your work friends are on there and your church friends are on there. If you, there's a growing gap between your public and your private life, you may just be walking in darkness. Number two may seem so simple. You're hiding things. You're hiding from accountability. You're hiding from church. You're hiding things from your spouse. You're hiding things that you know you shouldn't be hiding. Don't make excuses for it. That's darkness. If you're hiding things, you're walking in darkness. It'll bring shame. It'll bring a cycle where you feel like you can never expose yourself to the light of God. You're hiding things. Number three, you justify bad actions and you have lowered the bar of your personal convictions and consecrations over time. Think about it. Think about it. I want to ask you this question. I want you to look at your life a year ago today and right now. Have you had more consecrations than you did a year ago? Or have you walked away from some consecrations that you held a year ago? And the answer to that may be very telling. And I understand maybe some of you are in a different place in your life. But if you call Royalwood Church your home and you've been around for a while, I want to ask you, what direction are you heading with your personal convictions? Because I believe that the closer I get to God, the more convictions I should hold. The closer I get to God, the higher I should set the bar. I shouldn't look around for the least common denominator and say, what is someone else getting away with? No, I want to say, God. God, what are you calling me into? What are you calling me deeper to? Don't walk in darkness. Set the bar high. Follow after Jesus with reckless abandon. If you justify your bad actions, if you lower the bar of your personal convictions, you are walking in darkness. And number four, and maybe the one that hits home the most for every single one of us because we fight it every single day. Your life is all about you. If your life is all about you, then you are walking in darkness. If you're a faithful member of this church and you're not doing anything to help other people, if you're not serving somewhere, if you're not volunteering, if you're not praying for people, if you're not seeking out new members, if you're not looking for new people that are trying to understand this walk with God, then you're walking in darkness. Forgive me, but I just got to be plain. And to be honest, even more plain is the truth that we are all called to make disciples. That's what Jesus called us to do. That's our purpose on this earth is to make disciples. And let me just be honest. We can't leave it up to a ministry at the church to make disciples. That's the call of every single Christian. The connect is wonderful, but we can't just leave it on the shoulders of Dan Castleberry and Rondell Slatter to save every single person. We've got to step up and say, God, I was called to make disciples. I need to invest in people. I want to walk after you. We are all called to make disciples. That's what we were called to do. And let me say it this way. If you are not personally engaged in discipling someone right now and you call yourself a Christian, then I hate to say this, but that tells me that you are educated beyond your level of submission. And that is a dangerous place to be. There are mature Christians that are educated beyond their submission to Jesus Christ because they know what they are supposed to do, but they fail to act because they think that knowing what is right is the same thing as doing what is right. But that is not the case. Why? Because we have to wake up every single day and say, God, today I'm going to submit myself to you. I'm going to submit myself to your word. I'm going to walk in the light as you are in the light. I'm not going to walk after the darkness of my own desires. That's a daily battle. We need to walk 
in the light. 1 John 1, chapter 5, verse 8, it says, If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our heart. Oh God, may that never be said of me. May you never look upon me and say there is no room in his heart for my word. And the only way to make sure that that is the case is for me to say, God, I am sinful. God, I need your forgiveness. God, I am not exempt. I am not above. I am not anything more than what you have called me to be. I am nothing without you, God. So every single one of us in this place needs to take the topic of the condition of our heart and our life very seriously. And it's a difficult battle, I know, because darkness is so convincing. Darkness is convincing you that you're isolated, that you're alone, that no one understands you, that no one sees you, that no one can help you. It's so good at convincing you that what you see right now is real, and it's your life, and it's your destiny. It's so good at putting you in dangerous situations. It's so good at putting you against odds with spiritual authority in your life. It's so good at putting you at odds against the people of God. But all of these things... All of these attributes about darkness have one thing in common. And we see this highlighted in John chapter 1. The writer is speaking of Jesus Christ as the eternal word of God. And he's drawing this connection. He says, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. In verse 5, one translation says, And light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This version says the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The darkness can never extinguish it. And that, to me, highlights the most important truth that you need to understand about darkness. Because sometimes we look at light and darkness and we think that they are equals in this battle. But that is where you are far off. Because what I want you to understand, that when light comes into this place, darkness cannot abide. So the most important thing that you need to understand this morning is darkness is powerless. Darkness is powerless powerless you've been given too much power to the darkness in your life because when the light of jesus shines darkness cannot abide darkness cannot push back light light can only push back darkness so where light is darkness cannot abide there's no competition so you've been having a battle that should never exist because there's no battle between light and darkness simply when light exists darkness cannot exist Darkness can only exist in the absence of light. So this morning, the truth for you and the thing that I want to proclaim is that if you allow the light of Jesus Christ to shine into your life, there's no question, there's no wonder. Darkness cannot abide. There's not a doubt in my mind. I don't have any worry about it. Darkness cannot abide. Light drives out darkness. Light immediately dispels darkness, not the other way around. Darkness cannot abide the light. It is immediately dispelled. You may feel that you're walking in darkness and there's no escape today. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ died and rose again so that you may have life and life more abundantly. God is here this morning to change your perspective, to give you hope and a future that you have already given up on. God sees exactly where you are. And if you're breathing this morning, he's still working. If you have breath in your body, then you have hope in your spirit. And that is something that we need to understand. And even more than that, I love this idea. I love this truth that Jesus came on this earth and he was the light unto all men. And he died and he rose again. And now we have the ability for that same Jesus, that same light, 
We don't have to wait for it to be somewhere else. You don't have to come to church for me to give you the light. If you are filled with the Spirit of God, you are the light. You have that same light living inside of you. That's the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says you are not like that. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Matthew 5, 14 says you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. We carry this light with us everywhere that we go. And God can use us. And we are the light to the world around us. And today someone is so frustrated by the darkness in their life and you can't see a way out. And someone thinks that what's happening in their life right now is what is always going to happen. And you are stuck in a cycle of disappointment and failure. But that is not the case. This morning I want to I tell you a story. This is a story of a woman named Geraldine Largay. But I have to tell you at the outset that this is a sad story. It's a true story, but it's a sad story. See her up on the screen here. Jerry, as her friends and family knew her, was a 66 year old retired Air Force nurse, a wife and mother, hiking enthusiast. She was hiking in the Appalachian Mountains. But on July 22nd, 2013, Jerry stepped off the trail to use the restroom and got lost and remained lost. She survived for 20 years six days waiting for a rescue that never came. Geraldine's body was discovered in October of 2015, two years after her disappearance. In a notebook entry dated August 6, 2013, two weeks after she lost her way, she made a desperate plea. She wrote these words. When you find my body, please call my husband George and my daughter Carrie. It will be the greatest kindness for them to know that I am dead and where you found me, no matter how many years from now, please find it in your heart to mail this to them. This story, although a tragedy, is compounded by the findings of the warden who discovered her campsite. He wrote heartbreakingly that walking south from her campsite, the dense forest became open woods with good visibility only 50 yards away. And then after that, a clearing led to a, a logging road, and in total, he said it was a 30-minute walk. She was right there. In total, she was never more than two miles away from the main Appalachian Trail. Jerry was so close to safety, so close to her salvation, but she set up camp a mere 60 yards away from freedom because she couldn't see a way out. Darkness and the density of the trees caused her to give up just minutes from freedom. And I'm gonna be honest, this story makes me emotional, not because I knew her or know her of any more than a person in this story, but I believe and I fear that that's what may be happening in this very room today. Someone has set up camp in the dark, thinking that this is your final destination, thinking that the circumstance you find yourself in right now is it. And you're trying to make peace with it. You're trying to figure out a way to bear it. You're trying to figure out a way, okay, this is my life. I can figure it out. I'm going to be okay. I'm just going to make my way through this. Someone has maybe given up on the idea that there is a God. Maybe someone in this place is saying, God, God's not even real. And I made peace with that. Someone has maybe given up on yourself. I can, I can never be happy. I can never get out. I can never be fulfilled. But that's just not the case. That's not the way God made you to live. I want you to do something with me. I want you to take out your phone. If you have your phone with you, I want you to take it out real quick. I want you to take it out. I want you to hold your phone in your hand. If you've got a smartphone. And as I said at the very beginning, without God, there's darkness. But we're not made to walk in darkness. If you have his spirit, the Bible says you are a light. I want you, if you could, if you've got a flashlight on your phone, I want you to turn that on. I want you to hold that up. This is the reality of our life. Although the enemy doesn't want us to think it. The truth is that you 
what you have inside of you, your small prayers, your small belief, what your small faith is enough to illuminate so much around you. And that these small lights, we may feel like we're insignificant, we're small, we have nothing and can do nothing. But with the power of God, and if we take what we are and what we have, and we add to that the Word of God, and we add to that the people of God, we add these things, we need to quickly realize that there is no darkness that we cannot dispel. There is no darkness that we cannot overcome because we are the light. You are the light. Stand with me this morning. Your marriage may look dead, but it's just darkness. Your situation may look impossible, and I'm not here to argue that. I'm not here to tell you that, oh, that's not the way it looks, and you just need to, no. It, it does look that way. But what I want to tell you is that it's darkness. It's not your final destiny. It's not the end of your story. It's simply darkness. And if I can just convince one person, one person, that the situation of your life is not your final place, if I can just convince one person that God can turn the light on in your life, then I've done my job. If I can get one person to believe again that God can save your marriage, if I can get one person to have just a spark of hope again, that maybe I can have a better life than I've done my job. What I'm here to tell you is that darkness is not the end of your story because God wants to turn the light on. I'm here to tell you that the darkness that has surrounded your life, your situation, your family, your marriage, your future is powerless in the face of the Almighty God. Powerless. Darkness only has the power that you give it. And once you remove the power of darkness by shedding light on it, it has no hold on your life. Our ministry team is going to come at this time again. And in a moment, I'm going to open these altars. And I want to tell you that if you want the light that I've been speaking about this morning, if you have never been baptized in the name of Jesus for the washing away of your sins, if you have never received the gift of the Holy Spirit, these couples here at the front are here to pray with you because I want to tell you that the gift of the Holy Spirit, the ability to be the light of Jesus everywhere you go, the ability to extinguish darkness in your daily walk is a gift that is promised to every single person that would receive it. You are not too far gone. God has not abandoned you. You have not made too many mistakes. You are redeemable. You are salvageable. And God has that in store for you today. If something I've said has resonated with you and spoken to your heart, but you're not sure how to respond, if this entire setting seems foreign to you, I understand that. We have our Next Steps lobby. We have a couple over here that would love to just have a conversation with you about what's next in your walk with God. If you're not comfortable or you're not sure what to do, I encourage you, please, before you leave this place, talk to these wonderful couples about what God wants to do in your life. But I'm calling out to people who feel isolated. You struggle with isolation in a room full of people you feel all alone. You battle anxiety, depression, loneliness. You suffer in silence. I'm telling you that it's darkness and it's powerless. Remove its power by exposing yourself to the light of God and come and pray and allow God to shine a light on that isolation. If you struggle with fear, fear of the future, fear of a situation, if fear rules your emotion, God wants to replace it with faith this morning. But you got to be able to diagnose darkness as deception, and it's powerless. And finally, church, hear me. Darkness is dangerous. Don't allow it any place. Don't allow it any hold over your heart. Don't let it creep into your life, because it signifies the absence of light. As we read in the very beginning, darkness signified the absence of the voice of God. I never want to get to the place where I cannot hear God's voice. And to make sure of that, I've got to submit myself to the light of His Word and of His presence. Don't convince yourself that the darkness you're walking in is light because you cannot fellowship with God. But there is hope this morning. 
because the darkness can be defeated. And this morning, we, we ask people to step out of where they are and come to the altar because it signifies and symbolizes what's happening in your heart that I'm actually going to take a step out from where I am and I'm going to make a change and do something different. So this morning, I want to ask you, would you come? Would you come this morning and pray? Would you come this morning and find a place to pray? Would you come this morning and convince yourself, don't be like Jerry this morning, please. Don't die just moments away from your freedom because you gave up. Don't quit on yourself. Don't quit on your family. Don't quit on what God has for you because the light shines in darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Church, could we come and pray? Can we find a place to pray? In the name of Jesus, I pray that we would seek your light, God. God, I pray for those feeling isolated, feeling frustrated. Yes, press your way in. Make room for those that are coming. I pray against the spirit of isolation. I pray against the spirit of depression. It's darkness and it's powerless. God, I pray against the deception that wants to tell people.